All right. <clears throat> All right. So just real quick before I get into this, we just do a quick announcement. So I've changed my scheme for the schedule just a bit. I've decided it doesn't need to be followed perfectly. Um, the goal is to green everything that I can. Or in the case of where I can't make something up, I can't really make up Instacart hours. So um, I'll change that to like red um, or sorry, orange if I do the transcription that's associated with it. I get caught up on that. So as I complete things, I'm going to be catching up on and changing the color of these. And then to keep track of when I complete things, since it's not actually following the schedule completely, I have this daily log here on the side. And I'm going to write in everything that I do, um, just the essentials. So working, eating, um, studying, those three. I think those are really the three only important things that I have going on. So, <clears throat> um, so the color scheme, I have it memorized. So if it's green, it means I've completed everything in the box. And my intention is to be dualistic with each time frame. So, like here, I forgot to add the plus workout. On those ones. So the idea is I complete one or the other during that hour or both. And then if I don't complete both during the hour, that's when I will uh, do it another time and kind of add to either a future day or so I know I'm not going to complete this in two months at the rate that I'm going. So if I pick it up, I'll be able to, but um, <clears throat> I still get distracted and stuff. That's just the nature of changing habits um, and trying to better myself. So um, I've done all the way up to Bible AV5. So I have written down here, Bible AV5 is when I completed that. My intent is uh, as I complete workouts, I'll put a W in the uh, cell next to it, and then I'll put the date that I complete it. So I didn't write the date here because I completed it on the same day as uh, that I read it. So that is Z plan. Um, So today, <clears throat> I did not do the Bible readings this morning, uh, nor the workouts. I did a little bit of Instacart in the morning. And then I did not do the Instacart in the afternoon. I still have an hour before uh, I was supposed to start my Bible reading. So I'm just going to go ahead and do Bible readings now and start catching up. Um So that is the plan there. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and do Bible AV6. Oh, dang it. I did that last time. So Bible. And the way this is set up, if we go to Genesis, uh, AV6 starts at Genesis 46, and it's a partial set of nine. So I'm going to read also the first four chapters of Exodus. All right, Genesis 46. So Israel took all that he had and departed. When he arrived at Be'er Sheba, he offered sacrifices to the God of his father, Isaac. Then God spoke to Israel in a vision by night and said, Jacob, Jacob, to which he said, here I am. He said, I am the true God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for there I will make you into a great nation. I myself will go down with you to Egypt, and I myself will also bring you back from there, and Joseph will lay his hand on your eyes. After that, Jacob departed from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel transported Jacob, their father, and their children and their wives in the wagons that Pharaoh had sent to transport him. 
they took along their herds and their goods, which they had accumulated in the land of Canaan. And so they came into Egypt, Jacob and all his offspring with him. He brought with him into Egypt his sons and his grandsons, his daughters and his granddaughters, all his offspring. Now, these are the names of Israel's sons who came into Egypt, Jacob and his sons. Jacob's firstborn was Reuben. <clears throat> the sons of Reuben <clears throat> were Hanak, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. The sons of Simeon were Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jakin, Zohar, and Shaul the son of a Canaanite woman. The sons of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The sons of Judah were Ur, Onan, Shelah, Perez, and Zerah. However, Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan. The sons of Perez came to be Hezron and Hamul. The sons of Issachar were Tola, Puva, Iob, and Shimron. The sons of Zebulun were Sered, Elon, and Jalil. These are the sons of Leah, whom she bore to Jacob and Padanaram, together with his daughter Dinah. All his sons and daughters numbered 33. The sons of Gad were Ziphian, Haggai, Shuni, Esbon, Eri, Arodi, and Areli. The sons of Asher were Imna, Ishva, Ishvi, and Bariah, and their sister was Sarah. The sons of Bariah and Heber were Malkiel. These are the sons of Zilpah, whom Laban gave to his daughter Leah. She bore these to Jacob, sixteen persons in all. The sons of Jacob's wife Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. There were born to Jacob, uh, Joseph in the land of Egypt Manasseh and Ephraim, whom Asenath, the daughter of Potipharah, the priest of On, bore to him. The sons of Benjamin were Bela, Becher, Ashbel, Gera, Naaman, Ehi, Rosh, Mutpim, Hutpim, and Ard. These are the sons of Rachel who were born to Jacob, 14 persons in all. The son of Dan was Hushim. The sons of Naphtali were Jazil, Guni, Jezer, and Shalem. These are the sons of Bilhah, whom Laban gave to his daughter Rachel. She bore these to Jacob, seven persons in all. <clears throat> all those who descended from Jacob and went into Egypt with him, aside from the wives of Jacob's sons, were 66. Joseph's sons who were born to him in Egypt were two. All the people of the house of Jacob who came into Egypt were 70. Water. <clears throat> Jacob sent Judah ahead to tell Joseph that he was on the way to Goshen. When they came into the land of Goshen, Joseph had his chariot prepared and went up to meet Israel, his father, at Goshen. When he presented himself to him, he at once embraced him and wept for some time. Then Israel said to Joseph, Now I am ready to die. I have seen your face and know that you are still alive. Joseph then said to his brothers and to his father's household, Let me go up and report to Pharaoh and tell him, My brothers and my father's household who were in the land of Canaan have come here to me. The men are shepherds and they raise livestock and they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. When Pharaoh calls you and asks, what is your occupation? You must say, your servants have raised livestock from our youth until now, both we and our forefathers, <clears throat> so that you may dwell in the land of Goshen. For every herder of sheep is detestable to the Egyptians." Genesis 47. So Joseph went and reported to Pharaoh, my father and my brothers and their flocks and their herds and all that they possess have come from the land of Canaan and they are in the land of Goshen. <clears throat> he took five of his brothers and presented them to Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to his brothers, what is your occupation? They replied to Pharaoh, your servants are herders of sheep, both we and our forefathers. Then they said to Pharaoh, <clears throat> We have come to reside as foreigners in the land because there are no pastures for the flock of your servants. For the famine is severe in the land of Canaan. So please let your servants dwell in the land of Goshen. At that, Pharaoh said to Joseph, Your father and your brothers have come here to you. <clears throat> the land of Egypt is at your disposal. Have your father and your brothers dwell in the very best part of the land. Let them dwell in the land of Goshen. And if you know of any capable men among them, 
put them in charge of my livestock. Then Joseph brought in Jacob, his father, and presented him to Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Pharaoh asked Jacob, how old are you? Jacob said to Pharaoh, the years of my wanderings are 130. Few and distressing the years of my life have been, and they are not as long as the years of the lives of my forefathers during their wanderings. After that, Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from before him. So Joseph settled his father and his brothers, and he gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the very best part of the land, in the land of Ramses, just as Pharaoh had commanded. And Joseph kept supplying his father and his brothers and the entire household of his father with food, according to the number of their children. Now there was no food in all the land, because the famine was very severe, and the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan became exhausted as a result of the famine. Joseph was collecting all the money that was to be found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the grain that the people were buying. And Joseph kept bringing the money into Pharaoh's house. In time, the money from the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan was spent, and all the Egyptians began coming to Joseph, saying, Give us food. Why should we die before your very eyes, because our money has run out? Then Joseph said, If your money has run out, hand over your livestock, and I will give you food in exchange for your livestock. So they began bringing their livestock to Joseph, and Joseph kept giving them food in exchange for their horses, the livestock of the flock and of the herd, and the donkeys, and he kept providing them with food in exchange for all their livestock during that year. When that year came to its close, they began coming to him the next year and saying, We will not hide from my Lord that the money and the stock of domestic animals have already been given to my Lord. We have nothing left for my Lord but our bodies and our land. Why should we die before your eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land in exchange for food, and we together with our land will become slaves to Pharaoh. Give us seed so that we may live and not die, and that our land may not become desolate. Joseph then bought all the lands of the Egyptians for Pharaoh, because every Egyptian sold his field, for the famine was very severe, and the land became Pharaoh's. Then he moved the people into, the, into cities from one end of the territory of Egypt to its other. Only the land of the priests he did not buy, because the rations for the priests were from Pharaoh, and they lived on their rations that Pharaoh gave them. That is why they did not sell their land. Then Joseph said to the people, See, I have today bought you and your land for Pharaoh. Here is seed for you, and you must sow the land with it. When it produces, give a fifth to Pharaoh, but four parts will be yours as seed for the field, as food for you and for those in your houses and for your children to eat. So they said, you have preserved our lives. Let us find favor in the eyes of my Lord, and we will become slaves to Pharaoh. Then Joseph made it a decree, which is valid until today over the land of Egypt, that a fifth belongs to Pharaoh. It was only the land of the priests that did not become Pharaoh's. Israel continued to dwell in the land of Egypt and the land of Goshen, and they settled in it and were fruitful and increased greatly. And Jacob lived on in the lands of of Egypt for 17 years, so that the days of Jacob's life came to be 147 years. The time was approaching for Israel to die, so he called his son Joseph and said, If now I have found favor in your eyes, place your hand, please, under my thigh, and show loyal love and faithfulness to me. Please do not bury me in Egypt. When I die, you must carry me out of Egypt and bury me in the grave of my forefathers. Accordingly, he said, I will do just as you say. Then he said, Swear to me. So he swore to him. At that, Israel bowed down at the head of his bed. <clears throat> Genesis 48. After these things, Joseph was told, Look, your father is getting weak. At that, he, to he took his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, with him. <clears throat> then Jacob was told, Here your son Joseph has come to you. So Israel gathered his strength and sat up on his bed. <clears throat> and Jake Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me. And he said to me, I am making you fruitful, and I will make you many, and I will transform you into a congregation of peoples, and I will give this land to your offspring after you as a lasting possession. Now your two sons who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt are mine. Ephraim and Manasseh will become mine just as Reuben and Simeon are mine. But the children born to you after them will become yours. They will be called by the name of their brothers in their inheritance. As for me, when I was coming from Padam, Rachel died alongside me in the land of Canaan, while there was yet a good stretch of lands before coming to Ephrath. So I buried her there 
on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. <clears throat> then Israel saw Joseph's sons and asked, Who are these? So Joseph said to his father, They are my sons, whom God has given me in this place. At this he said, Bring them to me, please, so that I may bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were failing from age, and he was unable to see. So Joseph brought them close to him, and he kissed them and embraced them. Israel said to Joseph, I never imagined I would see your face, but here God has also let me see your offspring. Joseph then removed them from Israel's knees, and he bowed down with his face to the ground. Joseph now took the two of them, Ephraim with his right hand, to Israel's left, and Manasseh with his left hand to Israel's right, and brought them close to him. However, Israel put out his right hand and placed it on Ephraim's head, although he was younger, although he was the younger, and he placed his left hand on Manasseh's head. He purposely laid his hands this way since Manasseh was the firstborn. Then he blessed Joseph and said, The true God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the true God has been sh- who has been shepherding me during all my life until this day, the angel who has been recovering me from all calamity, bless the boys, Let my name be called upon them, and the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac. Let them increase to a multitude in the earth. When Joseph saw that his father kept his right hand placed on Ephraim's head, it was displeasing to him. So he tried to take hold of his father's hand to move it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. Joseph said to his father, Not so, my father, because this is the firstborn. Put your right hand hand on his head. But his father kept refusing and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He too will become a people, and he too will become great. Nevertheless, his younger brother will become greater than he will, and his offspring will become the full equivalent of nations. So he continued to bless them on that day, saying, Let Israel mention you when they pronounce blessings, saying, May God make you like Ephraim and like Manasseh. Thus he kept putting Ephraim before Manasseh. Then Israel said to Joseph, Look, I am dying. But God will certainly continue with you and return you to the land of your forefathers. As for me, I do give you one portion of land, more more than to your brothers, which I took from the hand of the Amorites with my sword and my bow. Genesis 49. And Jacob called his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may hold on. I guess I did read that one. Okay, sorry. And Jacob called his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you what will happen to you in the final part of the days. Assemble yourselves and listen. You sons of Jacob, yes, listen to Israel your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my vigor and the beginning of my procreative power, the excellence of dignity and the excellence of strength. With recklessness like turbulent waters, you will not excel because you have gone up to your father's bed. At that time, you defiled my bed. He actually went on onto it. Simeon and Levi are brothers. Instruments of violence are their slaughter weapons. Into their company do not come, O my soul. With their assembly do not join, O my honor, because in their anger they killed men, and for their pleasure they hamstrung bulls. Cursed be their anger, because it is cruel, and their fury, because it is harsh. Let me disperse them in Jacob, and let me scatter them in Israel. As for you, Judah, your brothers will praise you. Your hand will be on the neck of your enemies. The sons of your father will bow down before you. Judah is a lion cub. From the prey, my son, you will certainly go up. He has crouched down and stretched himself out like a lion, and like a lion who dares rouse him. The scepter will not depart from Judah, neither the commander's staff from between his feet until Shiloh comes. And to him the obedience of the peoples will belong. Tying his donkey to a vine and his donkey's colt to a choice vine, he will wash his clothing in wine and his garment in the blood of grapes. Dark red are his eyes from wine, and his teeth are white from milk. Zebulun will reside by the seashore, by the shore where the ships lie anchored, and his remote border will be towards Sidon. Issachar is a strong-boned donkey lying down between the two saddlebags, and he will see that the resting place is good, that the land is pleasant. He will bend his shoulder to bear the burden and will submit to forced labor. Dan will judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Let Dan be a serpent by the roadside, a horned snake beside the path that bites the heels of the horse so that the rider falls backward. I will wait for salvation from you, O Jehovah. As for Gad, a marauder band will raid him, but he will raid at their heels. 
Asher's bread will be abundant, and he will provide food fit for a king. Naphtali is a slender doe. He is speaking words of elegance. Joseph is the offshoot of a fruitful tree, a fruitful tree by a spring whose branches extend over the wall. But the archers kept harassing him and shot at him and kept harboring animosity against him. And yet his bow remained in place and his hands stayed strong and agile. This was from the hands of the powerful one of Jacob, from the shepherd, the stone of Israel. He is from the God of your father and he will help you. And he is with the almighty and he will bless you with the blessings of the heavens above, with the blessings of the deep below, with the blessings of the breasts in the womb. The blessings of your father will be superior to the blessings of the eternal mountains, to the desirable things of the enduring hills. They will continue upon the head of Joseph, upon the crown of the head of the one singled out from his brothers. Benjamin will keep on tearing like a wolf. In the morning he will eat the prey, and in the evening he will divide the spoil. All of these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is what their father said to them when he was blessing them. He gave each of them an appropriate blessing. After that, he gave these commands to them. I am being gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron, the Hittite, the cave in the field of Machpelah in front of Mamre and the land of Canaan, the field that Abraham purchased from Ephron, the Hittite, as a property for a burial place. There they buried Abraham and his wife, Sarah. There they buried Isaac and his wife, Rebekah. And there I buried Leah. The field and the cave that is buried that is in it was purchased from the sons of Heth. Thus Jacob finished giving these instructions to his sons. When he drew his feet up onto the bed and breathed his last and was gathered to his people. Okay, Genesis 50. Joseph then threw himself on his father and wept over him and kissed him. After that, Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. So the physicians embalmed Israel, and they took the full 40 days for him, for this is the full period for the embalming. And the Egyptians continued to shed tears for him 70 days. When the days of the mourning for him passed, Joseph spoke to Pharaoh's court, saying, If I have found favor in your eyes, give this message to Pharaoh. My father made me swear, saying, Look, I am dying. You are to bury me in my burial place, which I have excavated in the land of Canaan. Please let me go up and bury my father, after which I will return. Pharaoh replied, Go and bury your father, just as he made you swear. So Joseph went up, went up to bury his father, and all of Pharaoh's servants went with him, the elders of his court and all the elders of the land of Egypt, and all of Joseph's household and his brothers and the household of his father, only their little children and their flocks and their herds they left in the land of Goshen. Chariots and horsemen also went up with him, and the camp was very numerous. Then they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which is in the region of the Jordan. And there they carried on a very great and bitter mourning, and, they, and he kept mourning for his father seven days. The inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw them mourning at the threshold floor of Atad, and they exclaimed, This is a great mourning for the Egyptians. That, it was, that is why it was named uh, Abel Mizraim, which is in the region of the Jordan. So his sons did for him exactly as he had instructed them. <clears throat> his sons carried him into the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah, the field in front of Mamre that Abraham had purchased from Ephron the Hittite as property for a burial place. After he buried his father, Joseph returned to Egypt with his brothers and all those who had gone with him to bury his father. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, they said, it may be that Joseph is harboring animosity against us, that he will repay us for all the evil that we did to him. So they sent a message to Joseph in these words. Your father gave this command before his death. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I beg you, please pardon the transgression of your brothers and the sin they committed in bringing such harm to you. Now please pardon the transgression of the servants of your father's God. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. <clears throat> then his brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Here we are as slaves to you. Joseph said to them, Do not be, in, be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Although you meant to harm me, God intended it to turn out well and to preserve many people alive as he is doing today. So now, do not be afraid. I will keep supplying you and your little children with food. Thus he comforted them and spoke reassuringly to them. And Joseph continued to dwell in Egypt, 
he in the household of his father, and Joseph lived for 110 years. Joseph saw the third generation of Ephraim's sons, also the sons of Machir, Manasseh's son. They were born upon Joseph's knees. At length, Joseph said to his brothers, I am dying, but God will without fail turn his attention to you, and he will certainly bring you up out of this land to the land about which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. So Joseph made the sons of Israel swear, saying, God will without fail turn his attention to you. You must take my bones up out of here. And Joseph died at the age of 110, and they had him embalmed, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. That's the end of the book of Genesis. So let's go ahead and hop into Exodus, book of Exodus, row one. So this is books one through four, or sorry, chapters one through four. Exodus one. Now these are the names of Israel's sons who came into Egypt with Jacob, each man who came with his household. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. And all those who were born to Jacob were 70 people. But Joseph was already in Egypt. Joseph eventually died, and also all his brothers and all that generation. And the Israelites became fruitful and began to increase greatly. And they kept on multiplying and growing mightier at an extraordinary rate, so that the land became filled with them. In time, there arose over Egypt a new king, one who did not know Joseph. So he said to his people, Look, the people of Israel are more numerous and mightier than we are. Let us deal shrewdly with them. Otherwise, they will continue to multiply, and if a war breaks out, they will join our enemies and fight against us and leave the country. So they appointed chiefs of forced labor over them to oppress them with hard labor, and they built storage cities for Pharaoh, namely Pithom and Ramses. But the more they would oppress them, the more they would multiply, and the more they kept spreading out. So they felt sick with fear because of the Israelites. Consequently, consequently, the Egyptians forced the Israelites into harsh slavery. They made their life bitter with hard labor as they worked with clay, mortar, and bricks, and in every form of slavery in the field. Yes, they made them toil in harsh conditions in every form of slavery. Later, the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, whose names were Shif Shifra and Pua, and he told them, When you help the Hebrew women to give birth, and you see them on the stool for childbirth, you must put the child to death if it is a son, but if it is a daughter, she must live. However... <clears throat> The midwives feared the true God, and they did not do what the king of Egypt told them. Instead, they would keep the male children alive. In, the, in time, the king of Egypt called the midwives and said to them, Why have you kept male children alive? The midwives said to Pharaoh, The Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women. They are lively and have already given birth before the midwives can come into them. So God dealt well with the midwives, and the people kept increasing and becoming very mighty. And because the midwives had feared the true God, later he later gave them families. Finally, Pharaoh commanded all his people, You are to throw every newborn son of the Hebrews into the Nile River, but you are to keep every daughter alive. <clears throat> Exodus 2. <clears throat> About that time, a certain man of the house of Levi married a daughter of Levi, and the woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw how beautiful he was, she kept him concealed for three months. When she was no longer able to conceal him, she took a papyrus basket and coated it with bitumen and pitch and put the child in it and placed it among the reeds by the bank of the, of the Nile River. But his sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. When Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe in the Nile, her female attendants were walking by the side of the Nile and she caught sight of the basket in the middle of the reeds. She immediately sent her slave girl to get it. When she opened it, she saw the child, and the boy was crying. She felt compassion for him, but she said, This is one of the children of the Hebrews. Then his sister said to Pharaoh, Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go call and call a nursing woman from the Hebrews to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go at once at the... <sighs> Sorry, the quote ended and I didn't. Go. At once the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter then said to her, Take this child with you and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the, the child and nursed him. When the child grew older, 
she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became a son to her. She named him Moses and said, It is because I have drawn him out of the water. Now in those days, after Moses had become an adult, he went out, of his, out to his brothers to look at the burdens uh, they were bearing, and he caught sight of an Egyptian beating a Hebrew. One of his brothers, uh, one of his brothers. So he looked this way and that, and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. But he went out on the following day, and there were two Hebrew men fighting with each other. So he said to the one in the wrong, Why do you strike your companion? At this he said, Who appointed you as prince and judge over us? Are you planning to kill me just as you killed the Egyptian? Moses now was afraid and said, Surely the matter has become known. Then Pharaoh heard about it. And he attempted to kill Moses, but Moses ran away from Pharaoh and went to dwell in the land of Midian. And he sat down by a well. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and these came to draw water and fill the troughs to water their father's flock. But as usual, the shepherds came and drove them away. At this, Moses got up and helped the women and watered their flock. When they came home to their father, Royal, he exclaimed, How is it that you have come home so quickly today? They replied, a certain Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds, and he even drew water for us and watered the flock. He said to his daughters, but where is he? Why did you leave the man behind? Call him so that he may eat with us. After that, Moses consented to stay with the man, and he gave his daughter Zipporah to Moses in marriage. Later she bore a son, and he named him Gershom. For he said, I have become a foreign resident in a foreign land. After a long time, the king of Egypt died, but the Israelites continued to groan because of the slavery and to cry out in complaint, and their cry for help because of the slavery kept going up to the true God. In time, God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites, and God took notice. Exodus 3. Moses became a shepherd of the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian, while he was leading the flock to the west side of the wilderness, he eventually came to the mountain of the true God, to Horeb. Then Jehovah's angel appeared to him in a flame of fire in the midst of a thorn bush. And he kept, as he kept looking, he saw that the thorn bush was on fire and that the thorn bush was not consumed. So Moses said, I will go over to inspect this unusual sight to see why the thorn bush does not burn up. When Jehovah saw that he w went over to look, God called to him out of the thorn bush and said, Moses, Moses, to which he said, here I am. <laughs> Sorry, cracks me up because they always say, here I am. <clears throat> then he said, do not come any nearer. Remove your sandals from your feet because the place where you are standing is holy ground. He went on to say, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at the true God. Jehovah added, I have certainly seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and I have heard their outcry because of those who forced them to work. I well know the pains they suffer. I will go down to rescue them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of, the, out of that land to a land good and spacious, a land flowing with milk and honey, the territory of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now look, the outcry of the Egyptians of Israel has reached me, and I have seen how harsh, uh, the harsh way the Egyptians are oppressing them. Now come, I will send you to Pharaoh, and he will bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. <clears throat> However, Moses said to the true God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? To this he said, I will prove to be with you, and this, will, this is the sign for you that it was I who sent you. After you have brought the people out of Egypt, you, will, uh, you people will serve the true God on this mountain. But Moses said to the true God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your forefathers has sent me to you. And, say, and they say to me, What is his name? What should I say to them? So God said to Moses, I will become what I choose to become. And he added, This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I will become has sent me to you. Then God said once more to Moses, This is what you are to say to the Israelites, Jehovah the God of your forefathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And this is how I am to be remembered from generation to generation. 
Now go, gather the elders of Israel and say to them, Jehovah, the God of your forefathers, has appeared to me, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he said, I have certainly taken notice of you and of what is being done to you in Egypt. So I say, I will take you away from affliction at the hands of the Egyptians to the lands of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites to a land flowing with milk and honey. <clears throat> they will certainly listen to your voice and you will go, you and the elders of Israel to the king of Egypt. <clears throat> and you men should say to him, Jehovah, the God of the Hebrews has communicated with us. So please let us make a three-day journey into the wilderness so that we may sacrifice to Jehovah our God. But I myself do well know that the king of Egypt will not give you permission to go unless a mighty hand compels him. So I will have to stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my extraordinary acts that I will do in it. And after that, he will send you out. And I will give this people favor in the eyes of the Egyptians. And when you go, you will by no means go empty-handed. Each woman must ask her neighbor and the woman lodging in her house for articles of silver and of gold, as well as clothing, and you will put them on your sons and your daughters, and you will plunder the Egyptians. Exodus 4. <clears throat> Water real quick. <clears throat> All right. However, Moses answered... <clears throat> But suppose they do not believe me and do not listen to my voice, for they will say, Jehovah did not appear to you. Then Jehovah said to him, What is that in your hand? He answered, A rod. He said, Throw it on the ground. So he threw it on the ground, and it became a serpent, and Moses fled from it. Jehovah now said to Moses, Reach out your hand and seize it by the tail. So he reached out and seized it, and it became a rod in his hand. God then said, this is so that they may believe that Jehovah, the God of their forefathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Uh, uh, excuse me. Jehovah said to him once more, put your hands, please, into the upper fold of your garment. So he put his hand into the fold of his garment. When he drew it out, why, his hand was stricken with leprosy like snow. <clears throat> then he said, return your hand into the upper fold of your garment. So he returned his hand into his garment. When he drew it out of the garment, <clears throat> it was restored like the rest of his flesh. He said, if they will not believe you or pay attention to the first sign, then they will certainly heed the next sign. Still, <clears throat> <I'm sorry. clears throat> even if they will not believe these two signs and refuse to listen to your voice, you will take some water from the Nile River and pour it out on the dry land. And the water that you take from the Nile will become blood on the dry land. Moses now said to Jehovah, pardon me, Jehovah, but I have never been a fluent speaker, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant, for I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. Jehovah said to him, who made a mouth for man or who makes them speechless, deaf, clear-sighted or blind? Is it not I, Jehovah? Uh, so go now and I will be with you as you speak and I will teach you uh, what you should say. But he said, pardon me. Jehovah, please send anyone whom you want to send. Then Jehovah's anger blazed against Moses, and he said, What about your brother Aaron, the Levite? I know that he can speak very well, and he is now on his way here to meet you. When he sees you, <clears throat> his heart will rejoice. So you must speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I will be with you and him as you speak, and I will teach you men what to do. He will speak for you to the people and he will be your spokesman and you will serve as God to him. <clears throat> and you will take his rod in your hand and perform the signs with it. So Moses went back to Jethro, his father-in-law and said to him, I want to go please and return my brothers who are in Egypt to see whether they are alive, still alive. Jethro said to Moses, go in peace. After that, Jehovah said to Moses in Midian, Go, return to Egypt, because all the men who were seeking to kill you are dead. Then Moses took his wife and his sons and lifted them onto a donkey, and he started back to the land of Egypt. Moreover, Moses took the rod of the true God in his hand. Then Jehovah said to Moses, After you have returned to Egypt, see that you perform before Pharaoh all the miracles that I have empowered you to do. But I will allow his heart to become obstinate, and he will not send the people away. You must say to Pharaoh, this is what Jehovah says. Israel is my son, my firstborn. 
I say to you, send my son away so that he may serve me. But if you refuse to send him away, I am going to kill your son, your firstborn. Now on the road at the lodging place, Jehovah met him and was seeking to put him to death. Finally, Zipporah took a flint and circumcised her son and caused his foreskin to touch his feet and said, it is because you are a bridegroom, bridegroom, oh my gosh, (laughs) it is because you are a bridegroom of blood to me. I was getting the bridegroom, oh my, just, I'm doing it again. Bridegroom and blood mixed together. I'm like combining the words. I'm reading too fast. So we let him go. At that time, she said, a bridegroom, I did it again, a bridegroom of blood (laughs) because of the circumcision. Then Jehovah said to Aaron, go into the wilderness to meet Moses. So he went and met him at the mountain of the true God and greeted him with a kiss. And Moses told Aaron all the words of Jehovah who had sent him and all the signs that he had commanded him to do. After that, Moses and Aaron went and gathered all the elders of the Israelites. Aaron told them all the words that Jehovah had spoken to Moses, and he performed the signs before the eyes of the people. At this, the people believed uh, when they heard that Jehovah had turned his attention to the Israelites and that he had seen their affliction, they bowed down and prostrated themselves. End of Bible AV 6.